Well, hello. Um, this is Dave Ockley. I am uh, very pleased to uh, restart Gauge Theory Virtual. Is Gauge Theory semi-virtual? I see Danny in the audience. He's one of the uh, organizers of this series. The others, well, Ali is here. Um, John, Stephen, um, uh, Colia, Chris. So who am I missing? Matt uh, are all virtual, but I will pass it to Ali and let him take it away. All right, uh, thank you. Um, I know that you guys are here for math, but I'd like to say uh, a few quick words about some of the recent events in Iran. Um, some of you might be aware that there's been some widespread uh, protests um, after the death of uh, Mahsa Aminin while she is being in custody of um, morality police. Um, some of these protests happened in my alma mater, uh, Sharif University. Uh, the peak of the protest was yesterday, and some of the students, they were beaten and arrested after they were trying to leave the campus. Um, you know, nobody should be scared of, nobody should fear such consequences. Um, just because of expressing their opinions, especially at an institute of education. So I'd like to use this opportunity to condemn this and uh, condemn the violence and ask you guys to spread the word. Thank you. All right, so with that being said, let me start with um, <clears throat> uh, talk the math part, the not complement problem for null homotopic knots. This is a joint work with Ty Lidman. Uh, I'd like to start with the classical not complement problem. Uh, which is a celebrated theorem of Gordon and Lukey. Which says that if you have two classical knots, meaning knots in S3, Um, <clears throat> such that their complements are homeomorphic to each other. So to be more precise, the complements of a regular neighborhood of the knots, then that would imply that the knots K1 and K2 are equivalent to each other. Uh, for the sake of this talk, when I talk about homeomorphism, I usually talk about homeomorphisms of three manifolds, and I mean orient, orientation preserving homeomorphism. In particular, um, this can be also one way of interpreting these equivalences that we're asking there is a orientation preserving homeomorphism of S3, which maps the knot K1 to the knot K2. Um, why is this a non-trivial theorem? So let me actually first fix some standard, recall some standard conventions here. So let's say that you have some knot K, which is inside some, Three manifold, not necessarily S3, but I'm going to assume that this knot is not homologous. For instance, you can take the unknot and I'm going to look at the regular neighborhood of the unknot. And, and this regular neighborhood, there are two distinguished curves that I can consider. So one is the meridian of the knot, I denote by mu, and you also have another well-defined curve up to isotopy, which is the longitude and it's um, the unique isotopic class of uh, primitive curve on the knot complement, uh, which, uh, so this is the longitude 
and it bounds, it's a non-trivial, it gives us a non-trivial homology class in the complement, so it bounds a surface. All right, so whenever um, you have a knot, one of the things that you can do with it is performing dance surgery, uh, which means that you take a regular neighborhood, which is a copy of solid torus, and glue it back differently. Inside that solid torus that you glue back, there's a knot, the core of that solid torus, which I'm going to call it K prime, uh, core of the solid torus, core of the dance surgery. And this uh, dense surgery is determined by the three manifold Y, by the knot K, and a rational number, M over N, um, where here M over N, uh, this means that you know, uh, <coughs> the meridian of K prime, which can be thought as a curve here, is going to wrap around the meridian. Uh, wrap around mu m times and wrap around uh, lambda n times. So here this is m over n dead surgery of r naught. Okay. Okay, so now if you have a homeomorphism of the knot complements, so this means that Uh, this homeomorphism should map the longitude to longitude because longitude is defining something in terms of the complement. So phi of lambda 1 is to be lambda 1. But there is no reason phi of uh, the meridian of the knot k1 is equal to uh, mu sorry, this the meridian of the second knot. In general, it you could have some multiple of uh, the, long, uh, the longitude of the other knot. So on the basis of homology, at least you cannot rule that out. And uh, <clears throat> so part of the point, if n was zero, then you could obviously, you could extend this homeomorphism into homeomorphism of S3, which maps k1 to k2. Uh, motivated by that, there's a second variation of this knot complement problem. Maybe I state it here. Classical knot complex problem, which says that if you have a knot in S3, which is not the unknot, uh, then any surgery on this knot is going to be, it's not going to be homeomorphic to S3. Okay. You can see that that version is really motivated by this observation, uh, gives us the other version. But no natural question is that how about if we work with arbitrary three manifolds? What happens if instead of knots inside S3, we look at knots inside arbitrary three manifolds? So for instance, let's say that we have um, for i equals one and two, let's say that ki is a knot in a three manifold yi such that uh, the complements of these knots are homeomorphic to each other. Then does that imply that these knots are equivalent to each other? Is there some orientation preserving homeomorphism from Y1 to Y2, which maps K1 to K2? And the answer is an obvious no. So for instance, you can take um, K1 to be any knot in S3. And the second knot is going to be by some surgery on the original knot. So 
and K2 is the core of that surgery. And as we learned from the classical not complement problem, these two guys are almost always not equivalent to each other. But just by definition, it's almost immediate that the complements of this not K and K prime are equivalent to each other. So that tells us that we should at least impose some constraints either on the three manifolds or on the knots or both. Um, <clears throat> for instance, this is, there's a version of, there's a variation of this question that we put constraint on three manifolds, known as cosmetic, um, cosmetic surgery conjecture. And it's due to Weiler. And it's, the concern on the three manifolds is that they are the same. So let's say that we have um, two knots K1 and K2 inside the same three manifold. And if the complements of these knots are the same, the, the conjecture says that this guys should be equivalent to each other. Okay. Uh, there's a second conjecture which puts uh, put constraints on the knots, and it's more relevant for this talk. And it's due to why I will uh, which says that, let's say, wait, there are, I'm going to say that actually two versions of this other conjecture. In parallel to the two versions of the not classical problem. So the first version is saying that if we have, we let the three manifolds to be different, but now we require the knots to be null homotopic. So this is for i equals one and two. And then the same uh, statement as before, that if the complements are the same, then the knots are supposed to be equivalent to each other. There's a second version which uh, can be expressed in terms of uh, dense surgery. Um, <clears throat> so let's say that we have a knot inside a uh, three manifold. I'm gonna assume that this knot is not equal to the unknot. And then if um, some Forgetting some important assumption here that K is a null homotopic knot. <clears throat> then the core of the surgery, any surgery on this knot, is not null homotopic. Make sure that I'm not missing anything here. Okay, um, so the first um, major result in this direction, the direction of, like I said, the second conjecture is going to yeah. be the relevant for us. Yes? M is non trivial, right? Oh, yeah, so this is, I'm assuming that M, and, M over N is a rational number. So it's not infinity. So if n is zero, you would get back the original three manifold. Yeah. Is that the question? Yeah. Um, yeah. So the first result in this direction is due to black and B. Uh, 
uh, which prove conjecture B under the assumption that Uh, the first Bayley number of R3 manifold is non trivial. So, somehow, if the first non trivial, the first Bayley number is non trivial, there's enough room um, so that you can use some relatively classical tools for, in geometric topology like suture theory uh, to conclude that this cannot happen. Uh, well, if this is not homo, if you have a not homotopic knot, then the core of any surgery is not null homotopic. And the theorem that I'd like to talk about today is related to the case that, the remaining case when B1 of Y is equal to zero. So let's say that, um, let me state it this way, that let's say that we have a knot inside the three manifold where which is now homotopic. I'm gonna also assume that we are in the remaining case that B1 of Y is equal to zero. And uh, the core of surgery inside, um, you know, the core of some surgery of this knot is also now homotopic. Um, so the claim is that, okay, at least um, in a case, all right, so the first claim is that M over N has to be equal to plus or minus one. Um, I should say that here M, M equals one is easy. The part, the content of this part is that N is equal to plus or minus one. The point is that you can just look at, you, you can make some arguments about the fundamental groups and homology groups to get to the case that M is equal to one. So, okay. So now we are left with the case that B1 is zero and M over N is equal to plus or minus one. And in this case, we need some technical assumption on the three manifold Y. So it's a condition only on the three manifold that if y is SU to non-degenerate, um, <clears throat> then there is no such k. Okay. All right. So I have to tell you what I mean by. SU to non degenerate, but otherwise, are there any questions? Sorry, there is no such K, means there is no such case of the K prime is not. E, yeah, I mean, there is no such K, which is non homotopic inside a rational homology sphere, such that inside Y plus or minus one of K, plus or minus one surgery on the not K, the core is non homotopic. Uh, so, okay, so another way, uh, another way to rephrase this theorem is that the conjecture holds unless uh, Y is not SU to non-degenerate or M over N um, is it. The conjecture holds it unless Y is SU to non-degenerate and M over N is equal to plus or minus one. So that's the content of the conjecture. Okay, but what I mean by SU to non-degenerate, I should say that this is not really standard terminology. Six months ago, it meant something else, and probably in six months would mean something else, but like for now, why is SU to non-degenerate? If, if you look at the space of representations of the three manifold, into SU2, uh, this is a smooth manifold. And 
we want it to be smooth. I mean, it turns out that this is, you know, because part one of y is finitely generated, this is some uh, real algebraic variety. And what we want is that, in fact, as a real algebraic variety, it's smooth. So to be more precise, what we want is that this is a smooth manifold. And for any representation in R of Y, um, the dimension of the tangent space at uh, tangent space of the representation variety is equal to the first cohomology of the three manifold, but with some twisted coefficient. So rho is a representation to SU2, so it acts on its Lie algebra, and it would, dis it would induce some twisted uh, vector bundle of rank three on Y. So I'm gonna denote it by adjoint of rho. So this twisted cohomology minus zero uh, degree cohomology with the same coefficient plus three. And you should think about this three. Uh, we have this three over there because we're considering the space of all representations and there is always a conjugation action acting on that. So I'm not dividing by the conjugation action here. Um, yeah, so like I said, uh, I, I don't think this, this is a, I mean, okay, does this condition mean something? Well, it's probably not deeply related to the content of the theorem. So it is expected that maybe if somebody works harder on the foundations of floor homology, in particular instant of floor homology, maybe this assumption can be removed or can be, you know, relax into something weaker. So there's room, um, you know, to, it, it looks like there is room to still use similar arguments to uh, get something more efficient. Let me also give some examples. Oh, oh yeah, sorry, yeah, dimension of this, and these are maybe dimensions of these cohomology groups. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, okay, good. Um, <clears throat> all right, so what are some examples? For instance, you can take your three manifold to be any lens space or brisk on homology sphere or you know, any connected sum connected sums of this three manifolds. In fact, if you have two SU to non-degenerate three manifold, the connected sum is also SU to non-degenerate. Okay. Okay. Um. Uh, that's a good question. Um, I think you can um, even get examples by looking at surgeries of some knots, which are this way. Yeah, I don't remember the, the simplest example off the top of my head, but like, you know, you can take some twisted torus knots and just look at some correct surgery slope and you would get such three manifolds. Um, okay, what did I want to say next? Um, but I mean, just really, oh, yes? Okay, yeah. Exactly, yeah, yeah, that's a great point. Yeah, this is supposed to be the Zarsky the dimension of the Zariski tangent space and we're saying these are equal to each other. Another way of rephrasing this condition is that, I mean, you know, I'm interested in instanton homology, so secretly, you know, interested in Chern-Simons functional. 
Chern Sargent's function is a function that like the critical points are the representations of the three manifold. And this condition says that if you work with the, you know, correct Chern Simons, then your uh, critical points are more spot. So we are in a more spot situation here. So we're trying to avoid case that like you have more complicated uh, critical points. Um, okay. So let me, okay, I'm gonna, uh, for the rest of talk, I'm gonna, uh, gonna focus on the sketch of the proof. And uh, there are, okay, right at the beginning there are two ingredients which can be used to write another version of this conjecture. In fact, an equivalent version of conjecture B in the language of floor homology. Um, so the first one is actually completely topological. So it's done by combining a bunch of different works. So by combining the work of uh, Littman, Belovic, Wang, and myself on ribbon homology cobordisms, uh, work of uh, Jen Ham and Littman, and me uh, to obtain some unknot detection result. So like, um, <clears throat> And I'm gonna get, and for the, okay, so maybe I write it again, but for the rest of my talk, I'm gonna assume that the three manifolds are, they have trivial beta numbers. So Y is a three manifold, which is a rational homology sphere, and K is a null homotopic knot. So, um, so then K, so if you do zero surgery on this knot, and if it splits off a sum which is S1 times S2, uh, what notation do I have to do? I'm call N connected sum S1 times S2, then this implies that our knot is the unknot. And the reverse direction is obviously also correct. Um, so like in this first work, it is shown that N is, if you have, if zero surgery splits up S1 times S2, then N has to be Y itself, the original three manifold here. Maybe, we, uh, I think we assume that Y has to be irreducible, and here it is shown that, okay, so if it is Y, then it has to be the unknot, and the irreducibility assumption is dropped in the work of me. So the second one is some Deep result of uh, Kronheimer and Morovka about non vanishing uh, of instant on floor homology. So if um, so if you look at some, let's say that you have a three manifold C here. Actually, I lied a few seconds ago. Now I'm going to assume that Z has non-trivial Bailey number. So H1 of um, this three manifold is, uh, I think I just need the, yeah, okay, I'm just gonna write it like this. The first cohomology is C. Uh, when, if you look at the instantum floor homology of Z, then if this is zero, well, this is zero if and only if uh, something like this happens. Z is split of some S1 times S2 sum end. Okay. Um, you might notice that I use some additional decoration here, some omega. I'm gonna uh, gloss over this point for the most of the talk, but let me just at this point just say that this is some choice of cohomology class which determines some uh, SO3 bundle on R3 manifold, to be more precise. Let's see if I, okay. So omega is an element of um, second cohomology of C, such that omega pairs non-trivially. Wait. 
just above your hand, does it in connect some S1 times S2? Oh, oh, oh yeah, thank you, Dave. Yeah, this is, this is exactly what yeah. we have here, thank you. And Omega pair is non-trivially with a degenerator of um, the second homology of our three manifold. Okay, to be more precise, I think, well, I think this is probably what's known to Kornhav and Morovka, but the version that is written, Z is irreducible, and then you have to do some yoga using Scott version of Foucault's connected sum theorem to drop the assumption on Z being, you know, uh, irreducible. Uh, Yes, yes, yeah, that's a good point, yeah. Um, Pairs non trivially mod too, yeah, thank you. Yeah, I mean, for the experts, it means that I'm assuming, I'm using the choice of a uh, cohomology class such that we are in the admissible case, for instance, of floor homology. Okay, so now using this, we can simplify, well, we can rewrite, not really simplify, but rewrite this conjecture. Just gonna, sorry for the bad ordering, but I'm gonna write this version C of the same conjecture here, that if K is some Null homotopic knot. And K prime is the core of some surgery. And we're assuming that this is null homotopic. Then the claim is that uh, the floor homology of zero surgery on the original knot has to be zero. Okay, then if this is correct, then using Kornheim and Morovka's result, you know that uh, zero surgery should split off an S1 times S2 sum n, and then using this, you can say that your knot is the odd knot, and hence conjecture B. All right, then I'm gonna work, and from now on I'm gonna just work on version C. Maybe actually, all right, I'm gonna, I should say that B1 of Y is zero, something that I drop here. Um, do I need anything else? Um, yeah, I don't, well, yeah, I mean, like I said, also uh, in this, Theorem, m over n being, m being one is elementary. So I'm gonna just focus on the case that this is actually interesting. So I'm gonna work on the case that we are working with one over n surgery. I said, another, another version of it. So this yeah. is you're going to prove? Yeah, well, some with, with that assumption, yeah, with some additional assumption. But B is equivalent to C. Yeah, when we are going to focus, our goal is to approach conjecture C as much as possible. Um, <clears throat> all right, so, yeah, so let's just start, let's work on the on part one which is the easier case, again. So case one, I'm going to assume that n, the absolute, n, absolute value of n is not equal to one. And I want to show that if, all right, let me maybe just avoid more confusion. Let me write down what I'm trying to get at. So if k 
inside y is now homotopic and k prime in 1 over n surgery and this knot is also now homotopic then I like to show that this floor homology is zero okay uh, and I just want to just because I want to say something about instant of floor homology uh, let me just give you some review, you know, superficial what instant of floor homology means. Um, so, um, Um, so, floor hom instant on floor homology is supposed to be a homology of a chain complex where the generators are representations of the fundamental group. So, uh, in fact, uh, you know, the more relevant space to us is not the representation variety, it's the character variety of our three manifold. So, let's say that Y is a three manifold. Then uh, character variety of this three manifold is just the representation variety, the space of homomorphisms into SU2 divided by the conjugation action. In a case that in the case that your three manifold, there's a natural uh, torus sitting inside your three manifold. There's actually a useful viewpoint to think about the character variety. So assuming that you have a copy of T2 living inside your three manifold, then you can describe the character variety of Y as intersection of the character variety of this piece and the character variety of this piece inside the character variety of uh, the torus. This is just the consequence of the one camp and theorem. But uh, let's see what is the character variety of T2. So this is the quotient of a torus again, but this involution <clears throat> and yeah, so this is this this is some orbifold, uh, some sphere with four orbifold points which if you try it correctly, it looks like a pillowcase. And because of that, it's called a pillowcase. So now, if you have a, a natural way of getting three manifolds with torus boundary is looking at the knot complement. So then, let's say that you have a, a knot and you're looking at the complement of that knot, uh, then you can look at the character variety of this guy. I'm going to call it chi of k. And this is, um, this maps into the character variety of T2. Okay. So for instance, if your three manif if your knot is the trefoil, then uh, the image of the character variety of your knot inside the pillowcase is going to look like this. It's a union of two arcs. All right. Um, Um, okay, and now, all right, so we can just using the, this principle that I mentioned here, 
you can give some nice descriptions of the character variety of surgeries on or not. For instance, if you look at um, character variety of one over n surgery and R not k, you can see that it's equal to the intersection of chi of k. This is space. I'm implicitly assuming that we're looking at the image, and to be more precise, you have to do some fiber product. Um, but basically, this is intersection of this guy and some line inside the uh, pillowcase, some arc. So this is again the pillowcase. Um, so LN is the line which, is start, which has a slope N and it starts from this point. And depending on parity of N, it might end up at this point or at this point. This is LN. Um, well, in this case, it's this. So LN has a slope. Um, 1 over N. This is L3. Yeah, right then, draw another one. This is um, <coughs> L0. And I want to draw actually two more. Well, one of them is just this guy. This is not, strictly speaking, in this family, what I'm going to call this L infinity. And I don't care so much about this one. The one which is more important is this one, which I'm going to call L infinity hat. OK. All right. Um, so why L infinity hat is relevant for us, this is a point that I can say something about this instant and floor homology. So the instant and floor homology of y0 of k um, is, a call, is a, by definition, modulo some technical uh, points, is the homology of a chain complex. And at least in the absence of perturbations, this C is, is an abelian group, is the, the, our chain group is, is an abelian group generated by the elements of the entry section of L infinity hat and character variety of R naught K. Okay, so now I can say all right, a few words about how this can be done. A any questions about this pillowcase nonsense and stuff? Um, so, <clears throat> actually, a similar trick is, the similar trick that I'm going to talk in a second is used in the uh, proof of property P by Kornheimer and uh, Morovka. So, we want to show that, um, all right, what do we want to show? We want to show that, um, <clears throat> We want to prove that this i of y0, well, what are, what are our assumptions? I'm trying to prove this. Uh, what, you know, and not inside y, which is null homotopic, the core of 1 over n surgery is also null homotopic. And for the sake of simplicity, at least, if I want to draw a picture, I'm going to assume that n is equal to 3. So I'm going to. Draw uh, this arc L3 here. We had L infinity hat here and L0 here. So the assumption uh, that uh, K is null homotopic 
implies that the intersection of, well, it says that uh, uh, the character variety of y, which is the intersection of chi of k and 0, 0, sorry, not 0, 0, L0 is this point 0, 0. Right? We can check easily that this, this is what the assumption of null homotopicity of k implies. Also, uh, so this is, implies that. And the fact that k prime is null homotopic in one over n surgery, it gives us something similar. It says that the intersection of chi of k and L3 is equal to the same point. Um, all right, so we have some mysterious chi of k. We don't know what it is, but at least we know that. Yes? That's right, yeah, yeah. I am. So, so you, when you say intersection, you mean something like color? Yeah, well, yeah, so to be a bit more precise, yeah, I'm, I'm being very sloppy here, yeah, you're right. So Danny is saying that this intersection is not necessarily at this point. The character of the Y could be larger, but what is correct is that if you look at the image of the character variety of chi of K, inside the pillowcase, it intersects L0 only at the point zero, 0. Another way of thinking about it is that if you look at some representations of the three-manifold Y, and if you restrict it to the, uh, you know, the boundary of the regular neighborhood of R0, then that restriction is the trivial representation. And something similar is true about the image of chi of k and L3. Yeah, that's, you're absolutely right. What I said before, I mean, this part is correct, but like these are not exactly equal to chi of y or chi of 1 over n surgery. Did I? Oh, yeah, sorry. Yeah, yes. Implicitly, I was also working with the example L3. But yeah, in general, it's Ln, yeah. Um, all right. So. Right, so what, it's, what it tells us is that we have some uh, image of chi of k, something mysterious here, but at least uh, we know that it doesn't intersect the blue guy and the red guy. But if we could say that it doesn't intersect this L infinity hat, then using, where did I write it? Using this point, we could say that the floor homology is trivial and we would be done. Although this is not necessarily correct, but some important property of uh, floor homology is that, you know, it's, it's um, you know, there's some flexibility going on. It's not as rigid as character variety. Like if you uh, perturb this L infinity hat by some appropriate perturbation, it wouldn't, it wouldn't change the floor homology. And it turns out that you can change it by running out of colors here. Uh, if you change L infinity hat to this guy, to this purple guy, which travels along L0 for a little bit and goes along the blue guy, then the floor homology doesn't change. But then using this assumption, we would see that this purple guy doesn't intersect the yellow guy. So, I mean, maybe I call this L infinity check. And so what is correct is that floor homology of Y zero um, of K as the homology of a chain complex where C is generated by by L infinity uh, check intersect 
chi of k, and this is empty and hence the floor homology is trivial. And that's what we wanted to show in this case. Okay. All right. So basically at the end of the day, we just, we want to show some floor homology is zero and we can show it by uh, realizing it as a homology of a chain complex with trivial chain group. All right, now I'm gonna get to case two. And I mean, the case of, I mean, really the signs are not so important, so I can assume that we got less of generality and is equal to negative one. And I'm gonna make just, uh, for the sake of this talk, I'm gonna assume that Y is also an integer homology sphere. So I'm gonna assume that all integer, integral homology groups of Y are trivial. Slightly uh, restrictive assumption and in reality you have to use with some different version of floor homology, instant of floor homology to carry out this step. But the ideas are essentially the same. Oh, I shouldn't, okay. All right, what do I wanna show in this case? I have we have, uh, I shouldn't have raised it. So we have a null homotopic knot inside Y. We have the core of surgery, which is also null homotopic. And I wanna show that the zero surgery of this three manifold with, uh, yeah, the, the instant of floor homology of zero surgery is not trivial. But in this case that we're looking at negative one surgery, there is important gadget that uh, we have in instant of floor homology, which is called surgery exact triangle, which relates this floor homology of the zero surgery to a floor homology of the original three manifold and the floor homology of um, negative one surgery on the three manifold. In fact, these three guys, they fit into an exact triangle. So this is floor surgery exact triangle. And what is correct is that, okay, so we can, say, all right, so we wanna show that this guy is zero but this is equivalent to say that F is an isomorphism. And let's see why we should expect that F is an isomorphism here. I'm gonna go back again to fundamental groups and elementary topology here. So let's look at these three manifolds. Pi. Oh, actually, maybe before doing so, let me just say that what is F? F is, in, in fact, we can say more about F. You know, F is a cobordism map. So part of the TQFT package of instant of floor homology associated to the two-handle cobordism from Y to negative one surgery. And what happens is that, um, so uh, this, just uh, schematically, this is Y, we're fattening up Y and then we're gluing a two handle so this is W and the outgoing end is gonna be uh, Y, negative one surgery. And you can convince yourself that because the knot is not homotopic, then you can see that pi one of Y, well, you have the restriction, uh, you have the inclusion map, you have, the inclusion induces a map at the level of fundamental group and because K is Null homotopic, this is an isomorphism. And 
and you have something similar on the other side, the pi 1 of uh, negative 1 surgery. Okay. Um, and what it implies at the level of character varieties is that character variety, taking character varieties contravariant functor, so you would get restriction maps from character variety of the cobordism, the character variety of the three manifolds. And these are also isomorphism. And in an ideal world that we don't need any perturbations, we can define floor homology in uh, you know, the cobordism maps without any perturbations. These are all related to the um, you know, floor, instant floor homology and cobordism map F. So, the, so in the absence of perturbation, in general we need perturbations because we have to guarantee some transversality assumption, but for the sake of simplicity, it's actually important. It's, a, it's the technical assumption which is related to SU to non-degeneracy. Well, let's, this is a more restrictive assumption and let's assume that we, we don't need any perturbations. Then the floor homology of Y is the homology of a chain complex where C is generated by character variety of Y. The floor homology of negative one surgery, the homology of another chain complex, this one generated by chi of negative one surgery. And it's not true that the cobordism map F is defined only in terms of flat connections on W. F is defined In terms of SU2, in terms of ASD connections, and there's a notion of energy on SU2 connections and SU2 connections with uh, trivial energy with energy zero are exactly the SU2 elements of the character variety of W. Okay. And if you try to make this observation at the level of, you know, built it into the homological algebra, which is relevant for, uh, you know, definition of floor homology and the cobordism maps, what you would get is that All right, so we are looking at floor homology of Y and floor homology of the negative one surgery and the not. And we wanna, there's a cobordism, there's a cobordism map F, we wanna show that this is an isomorphism. But using the notion of energy, in fact, you can see that this is a filtered chain complex and this is and associated to the filtration, you can get a spherical sequence and the second page of this spherical sequence is the homology of the character variety. So you have a speckle sequence from here to here. You have a speckle sequence from the character variety of the negative one surgery to the instanton floor homology. And there is also a map. I mean, this map is also filtered, so you would get a map of a speckle sequences. And this map F0 is defined in terms of uh, chi of W. And somehow just exactly because this restriction mass from chi of W to these two guys are isomorphism, you can see that particular this F0 is an isomorphism. 
And now you have a spherical sequence and a map between them. The second page is an isomorphism, so that implies that F is also an isomorphism. Okay, so that's as much as I want to say about the proof. Let me maybe I let me end by just some remark that um, so there are yes, there is this meta conjecture in uh, various versions of floor homology that if you have a degree one map from one, this is just the homological degree. So degree of f is one. It's a map between three manifolds continuous map of three manifolds. Then um, floor homology of Y is supposed to be larger than floor homology of Y prime in their conjectures. I'm just writing in terms of floor homology because it's true for Different, I mean, there's, there's a conjecture for different, for any version of a uh, three manifold floor homology, but also you should be careful how to state it for instant of floor homology. But in any case, so like there are these conjectures, and in this case, there are actually just from the null homotopicity of the NAS K and K prime, there are degree one maps. So this is in our case. There are these degree one maps in both directions. And this conjecture predicts that the floor homology of this guy uh, should be the same. I'm just gonna write down maybe HF of Y, the same as HF of negative one surgery. And you know, this, this part of the theorem can be regarded as something related to that general condition, but of course it's not. You're assuming that you have to give one maps in both directions and you would get some isomorphism. And moreover, in this case, at least you can see that one of the isomorphisms is topological. But in general, I don't know. I don't think it's completely expect that both of you know, these maps are uh, topological. Anyhow, so I'm gonna stop here.